Hello everybody and a very warm welcome to tonight's video. The first video in the summer 2021 Beauty and Sound Organ Festival. That's quite a mouthful. But what a better way to start an organ festival like this than handing over to the BIS community. Call for Composers 2 is the follow-up from Call for Composers as you may have guessed. Um, it proved very popular, and this time around, I received over 50 individual compositions from people all around the world. There's so much talent in the BIS community that I'm really quite astonished. And I've really had to up my game to play this music as well as I can. Some quite challenging music, um, also some very delicate and slow and beautiful music as well. You're in for a real treat this evening. The uh, festival program is available to download. A link is in the video's description. I recommend downloading that, um, following it through. It contains detail about all of the upcoming events and the artists and compositions in question. On to the first piece this evening. I'm going to hand over to Robert Danta for his Flourish in Five. Robert is here in the UK and as the title suggests, the piece is in five and sometimes in seven. Um, it's a really terrific piece this and I think it's the perfect way to open this Call for Composers too. This piece was um, written, well, it started in 2014 when Robert unfortunately broke his leg. So he was trying to find something to do. And what better is there to do than write a, a flourish for the organ? The organ I'll be using for this piece is the terrific organ of Rotterdam. So Robert Danter uh, is going to open tonight's Call of the Composers 2 with his flourish in five.
<laughs> How about that, that pedal glissando? Isn't that amazing? I must admit that pedal glissando took me a few attempts to get right. It's not something that I'm trained to do. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure of any piece by Bach where there's a pedal glissando. So it's good to see that you're all enjoying that. I've got the chat just here with me, so I can see that you're all enjoying that. Robert, that is, was a terrific piece, and thank you so much for sending it through. <clears throat> now, I, I, I like to do contrast here on Beauty and Sound. If we have a jolly, uplifting, and uh, joyful dance-like piece, I like to contrast that with uh, something else. Which brings us on to the next piece by Alejandro Consalacion. Apologies if that is not pronounced correctly. This is a, a meditation on Ubi Caritas, or a fantasy on Ubi Caritas. When Alejandro uh, sent this a few weeks ago, uh, playing it through, it immediately struck me as something very, very beautiful. And um, I'm so glad that it's now in my repertoire. Um, and I, I hope that all of these pieces um, will be on, in your repertoire uh, too. So Alejandro is actually from the Philippines um, and this piece was originally improvised in 2006 and was transcribed in 2012. It's easy to see that this piece was originally a, a trans, uh, an improvisation because it has a really wonderful floating and dreamy uh, feeling about it. The organ I shall be using for this uh, piece is Nancy, um, this terrific uh, uh, organ in France, which has large elements of Cavaille Col in it. It just sounds wonderful. It's very quiet, this piece, and also very, very loud towards the end, which you'll have to wait for. Ubi Caritas is one of the most beautiful and well-known uh, plain song chants, and I really hope that you enjoy listening to the plain chant in this piece by Alejandro, Meditation or Fantasy on Ubi Caritas.
Well, isn't that just so beautiful? Uh, thank you very much, Alejandro, for sending that. Um, apparently, this piece is also available in F major. Um, the keen-eyed people amongst you have noticed that it was in F sharp. There's one or two sharps to get your fingers around and feet in F sharp major, including an E sharp. So yes, there was one or two moments where I had to write in the score, oh, yeah, that's an E sharp, <laughs> and double sharps, Whew. but really worth the effort. So let's now have another bit of contrast. Let's go to um, a dance, another dance-like piece uh, written by Henk Vogel, who is from the Netherlands. A stampy was written in 2021, and the word quite literally means to stamp or stamping. So you can imagine what's coming up. Um, this, uh, this Henk said to me that this piece has a feeling of um, house music. Now, house music is a type of dance uh, music. It's electric music. Some of you will know what it is. Um, it's a type of dance music. It's house. So whether that, that, will, that description will help you um, put into context this piece, I don't know. <laughs> but it, this piece is really, really terrific. And it certainly has a very strong beat about it. You'll see exactly what I mean in a moment. Um, no prizes to those people who can uh, spot the well-known tune halfway through. So over to the Netherlands for Henk Vogel's Estampi, uh, played on the uh, St. Mary Le Beau organ here in London. <laughs>
Well, if that didn't have you nodding your head or tapping your foot, your foot, I don't know what will. <laughs> terrific, absolutely terrific. Thank you very much, um, Hank, for sending that through. I do hope you now see what I mean. Um, I think Graham has already spotted. Um, I say that there is a, a huge amount of talent in the BIS community. And I hope now you can see what I'm talking about. I wasn't just saying it. There's a lot more to come. Hank, that was brilliant. Really brilliant. Thank you very much. And even I saw someone even got to the house music reference. I haven't listened to house music for years. Um, so I'll need to go and listen to some more to see whether that reminds me of that piece. Now, over to one of our younger composers, uh, someone who appeared in the Call for Composers uh, 1, um, Adam Heron, who is based here in the UK. And I'm, I'm going to play two pieces uh, by Adam. I think both pieces that he sent through were of um, extremely high quality, um, so I had to include them both. So if you want to go and check out his other two pieces, go and find Call for Composers 1. Um, this first piece, the Prelude in D, is a very quiet piece, um, and I say this a lot, and people sort of shoot me down for saying it, but this is an almost a sight-readable piece that you could play um, before a, 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 an even song or before a service. It's very quiet and very reflective. And apparently, I'll quote um, Adam here, it was inspired by the sun rising up and striking the south window on a Sunday morning at a church in Sheffield uh, when... Adam was a student. Um, this piece uh, is influenced by early English music, such as by people as um, William Boyce and um, John Stanley. The organ I will be using for this one is Alessandria. Adam's second piece is very different to his first piece. It's a toccata on, um, on Veni Emmanuel, one of the great Advent uh, hymns, but plain song hymn. Um, Advent would not be Advent without Veni, Veni Emmanuel, O Come, O Come Emmanuel. Again, this was only finished a few weeks ago, so it looks as though Adam actually was writing these pieces for Call for Composers 2. Uh, it has been inspired uh, quite clearly by the French school of um, organ toccatas, and I think particularly uh, from the finale of Vienne's first symphony. The, uh, Adam, he says himself that he borrowed some of the chromatic language um, towards the end of the uh, finale from the first symphony uh, before the recapitulation. Another quote from Adam here. There are also some slight English influences, such as the chromatic median shifts in the middle section, which is a feature I first came across in the music of Vaughan Williams. Well, look out for that, won't you? So the first piece is Prelude in D, followed immediately uh, by uh, Toccata on Veni Emmanuel on the um, terrifically exciting organ of Caen.
What to say about that? Isn't that just a wonderful Takata? Um, the best Takata I bet you've heard all day. And it's the first time most of you would have heard it. <laughs> I apologize if at the beginning of that, there was no audio, there was no audio in here. Um, I might have to just play it at the very end of the video again, because the, uh, it's important that we have all of the music. Um, it's good to have all of the composers so far in the chat. I've just seen Adam in the chat, so it's good to have you with us, Adam, and um, well done, well done. Please keep writing. I'd like you to write me more music, please. Terrific stuff. Um, very naughty T.S. de Picardy at the end. I think I've said before that there are only a few hymns where I will end on a T.S. de Picardy and Veni Veni Emmanuel when, and it, when um, playing the normal plain song version, plain chant version, um, I don't normally end on a T.S. de Picardy, but I think that Takata really calls for it. So bravo, brilliant stuff, loved it. Now, John Hosking is next. John isn't in the chat. John sends, sends his apologies. He's, um, I think he's playing for a choir rehearsal uh, in his church. Uh, but he will join us later and he will look, be looking back through the chat. So please do be kind to him. John Hosking has sent me, um, sent me a few pieces, but I chose his uh, processional march. Uh, by the way, John's based here in the UK, uh, the northwest of England. Uh, it was commissioned in 2019 for a series of pieces um, that could be played on um, small and large instruments um, effectively. So you can either play it on a, you know, a big Rotterdam or a small chamber organ. And I chose this piece because it is, it's manuals only, but it's just so utterly delightful and is certainly a sort of piece that you could play on a uh, one manual organ very easily, or an organ with limited uh, resource. Um, it's very short, um, but actually it's a great tune and extremely well written. John sent me a piece uh, for the Call for Composers 1 and I played a um, Takata. I'll, I'll tell you this, I sent an email to John because um, he, he, sent, he said to me that he would like to send me some pieces. And I said, yes, I would love you to send me some pieces. Can you make sure that they are not too off the wall? Didn't I, John? And one of the pieces he sent me was, you could say, off, so far off the wall that the wall has fallen down. It's terrific, um, but it was just a little bit too many notes to learn in such a short period of time. Maybe one day. The organ I'll be using for a processional march by John Hosking is the uh, St. Mary Le Beau in, um, in London. This organ is a uh, Kenneth Tickell organ um, and originally was two manuals but has been extended to three manuals in this particular sample set. And it's, uh, on, my money is on this one um, as being the best English organ currently available. So John Hosking's processional march.
Yes, a very British indeed, and you can indeed imagine uh, waving your flag at the last night of the proms. I think that was completely John's intention uh, to write it in that style. John's very good at writing uh, music in certain styles. His off-the-wall music is very French. He's a very good improviser. Um, John's a very, very fine organist, far better than me, and he writes a uh, lot of very good music. Right, on to someone who you may have heard of. I don't know whether Paul is in the chat or not. I've not seen his name, um, but Paul Fies, Elegy. Th Paul wrote this um, this year in 2021. Um, he is 22 and is from Germany. He is one to watch. A fabulous player, a very talented player. In fact, he's appearing, I think he's the only artist actually to appear twice in, the, um, in this organ festival. He's written a elegy, which I'm going to play now, and he's also appearing in the joint junior organ recital on Friday, playing some very exciting music indeed. So like I say, this piece was written only this year. It's brand new, but could have been written uh, here in England in the early 20th or mid 20th century. It's very similar uh, to pieces such as um, Falben Ball's Elegy or Walford Davis's uh, solemn melody it has a beautiful tune um, accompanied by some very, very luscious harmony. For this uh, piece, I'm going to use the um, well-known organ of Rotterdam, the in St. Lawrencekirk in the Netherlands. A terrific, humongous organ with some very exciting chamards. You all know this organ really well, and you've all heard me play it many times. So let's hear Paul Fay's Elegy, beautiful piece indeed.
very similar, I hope you can see what I mean, uh, to the uh, Thalban Ball elegy. And uh, uh, as I said before, the Walford Davis solemn melody starts very quiet, has a beautiful melody, um, and makes good use of the melody, develops it, builds up to a crescendo before dying down at the very end. Paul, good to have you with us, and uh, thank you very much for, for writing and for sending that piece. Well, we're at the halfway mark now, only halfway, and there's more good stuff to come. Let's go over to, um, to the USA for Phil Leyenbauer's Festivities! Exclamation <laughs> mark. This was written in 2021 uh, for an organ album called Organ Music for Joyful Moments. And when you hear this piece, you'll see that that particular title was clearly in Phil's mind when writing this piece. You have to listen out for um, uh, inspiration from C.S. Lang's tuba tune. Now this is a, a sort of a uh, tuba tune actually. Um, so of course one of the best tubas that we have here in the Beauty and Sound organ uh, garage is the one on the Alessandria organ. So that's where we're going to go. We're going to go over to Italy to hear an American piece played by a British organist. Phil Leyenbauer's Festivities. Well, I'm glad that you were all dancing away to that one. It's certainly a very groovy piece, isn't it? Phil, it's good to have you in the chat. I hadn't realised that you were um, in the chat. Um, cool guy Phil, is that right? Um, organ guy Phil. I think cool guy Phil would be, would be good as well. Organ guy Phil, um, thank you very much for sending that through. Um, and I'm, I'm glad to see everyone was enjoying the tuba as well in Alessandria. It's a terrific tuba, isn't it? Let's come back over to England now for two pieces um, by Lawrence Caldercote, who is based in Northampton, um, who is 
and the organist at a very, a very fine church, All Saints uh, Church in Northampton, where there was a beautiful Walker organ. Played it many times. Um, and I can see why, um, why Lawrence is the organist there, because it's a, just a beautiful place. A very good musical tradition indeed. So two pieces by Lawrence, an aria and a moto peputo. Let's start with the aria. This piece was written um, under rather tragic circumstances. Uh, here in the UK, um, in July 2005, we had a, a horrendous terrorist attack in London. Um, July 7th 7, 7, um, 7, um, 7 of July, bombings. And Lawrence wrote this uh, aria in response to uh, that uh, incident. And you can actually, when hearing the music, hearing the powerful harmony, hearing the melody, and hearing the simplicity, you'll be able to conjure up what uh, Lawrence was feeling at the time. However, his second piece is a bit different. He wrote this in 2008. And moto um, peputo quite literally means perpetual motion. Um, think of um, Rimsy Korsakoff's Flight of the Bumblebee. Lots and lots of notes. Um, and that's basically what a um, mamota, moto perpetuato is. I'm getting all of these consonants muddled up. Um, I'm, do I'm doing it, I'm doing mamoto peputo. So this particular piece has lots of repeated notes in the left hand. That's the moto peputo, perpetual motion. Uh, motion. Now this piece was written to, I'll quote Lawrence here, was written to celebrate the reopening of the um, Aloha to Stirling railway line in Scotland. And it uses the perpetual motion to depict a railway journey, which I think it does perfectly well. <laughs> so two pieces by Lawrence, um, starting with his 2005 Aria and then his 2008 Moto Peputo. This organ um, is St Mary Le Beau and it's, it, I think it, um, the clarity is needed, particularly in the second piece, because it's quite quick. So, Lawrence, let's hear your aria and I'll say it once more. Moto Paputo.
at which point the train has arrived in the station. <laughs> um, it's, it's rather quick, isn't it? Choo, 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 choo. And I think um, if that was a, the, the, the speed of uh, a steam train, I think the person shuttling the coal would be working in overdrive. Uh, when we had the Flying Scotsman interrupt Virtual Church a few weeks ago, it wasn't going quite, um, it wasn't quite going that fast. Uh, so two contrasting pieces there by uh, Lawrence. Thank you very much for sending um, those through. Now, we're going to go to um, Arthur Robson um, for a very short single page uh, trio on Just As I Am. Uh, Arthur is based in the south of the UK, uh, not too far from where I am here. Um, and this piece was written only this year, in February of this year, 2021. Uh, Arthur has always, he, he tells me, has always loved this simple beauty on, um, of the melody and the effect of this particular hymn, um, Just As I Am Without One Plea. And he really enjoys its emotional um, intensity. It is written in the Baroque style. I didn't need to tell you that. You would have guessed that straight away. Um, and I'm going to play it um, because of its style, its uh, compositional style. I'm going to play it on the organ in Harlem. Um, the, the wonderful organ, the Muller organ that we have uh, in the fleet from Harlem. It's terrific, very appropriate and very clear. So over to Arthur Robson for his trio on Just As I Am. Well, thank you very much indeed, Arthur, for sending that. It almost, um, I, I would like there to be a second verse, as it were, uh, rather than just repeating it. I'd like you to do um, maybe a second page, because it's so beautiful. Just continue it in that style. It's really, really uh, stunning indeed. So thank you very much for sending, sending that through. We're going to uh, stay in Harlem just for quite literally a few more seconds. Uh, for a piece uh, by Tim Atride called Dance for the Flutes. Tim uh, is based here in the UK and this piece was written in 2002. Um, and I'm going to quote, I asked all of the composers to give me a little bit of background to the music, so I'm going to quote um, Tim here. The inspiration was a rural scene with a pony and a trap. Um, trotting along a country lane. <laughs> um, yes, I think I can quite see that. Um, so if you, if you blink, you will miss this piece. It's over before you know it. I chose Harlem uh, because it has some beautiful flutes. Um, so these are the flutes on each of the three manuals. 
Timotrides dance for the flutes. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> that was over quick. <laughs> I told you it would be, didn't I? I told you that would be over quickly. Um, but it's a lot of fun. That's the sort of piece that you could play as a very cheeky uh, encore, particularly if you've got some really cool flutes on the organ. Um, now, let's just um, go into something a little bit more serious now. Shall we have another toccata? How about a Toccata on Noel Nouvelland? Um, now the green blade riseth. So Chris Biddle has sent me a Toccata on Noel Nouvelland. Um, and Chris is based here in the UK um, in Warwick. There's a very good university in Warwick. Um, and it is written only in uh, February of this year. A lot of the pieces composed for um, this Call of Composers seemingly are brand spanking new. The ink is barely dry on the page. So it's really wonderful uh, to be sat here playing them for the first time. Uh, like I say, this piece is based on the Easter tune, Now the Green Blade Riseth. Um, you can make some comparisons um, um, to the Marcel Dupre variations on the same theme here, particularly um, in Dupre's final few pages in the Toccata, his, his own Toccata. Um, but so this, this piece is, as you'll see, uh, is, it was inspired by the French school of um, organ writing. Um, the French, I think, uh, do Toccatas particularly well. Um, so what better inspiration is there? I'm very, very happy and pleased to see most of the composers, I think nearly all of the composers in the chat. It's very, very good to have you with us. I do hope that I've played your pieces as you expected me to play them and there are no horrible surprises. <laughs> so, Chris Biddle, uh, over to your Toccata on Noel Nouvelet.
I forgot to say at the beginning that that uh, organ, as you probably guessed, was of course uh, Caen. Um, the final few bars there are Jigu Takata transposed down to F major. Um, a great inspiration and actually a really wonderful piece at that. So could you see what I mean by the, the Dupre, particularly towards the end with those, um, those not um, figured notation motifs? Um, very good, actually, very good indeed, Chris. That, um, that's a really, really good piece indeed. I was um, taken by that straight away. Um, I'm going to just take the volume right down now. Um, we're going to listen to um, one of the most glorious um, Welsh hymn tunes. And if there's anyone, uh, any Welsh people watching, you'll say, well, there's plenty of Welsh hymn tunes that are quite glorious. Which one are you going to say? Well, I'm going to say, um, Aberystwyth. I think that's pretty glorious, isn't it? Curtis Hawthorne um, supplied me with a prelude on this hymn, and when I saw the email arrive in my inbox and it said prelude on Aberystwyth, I thought, yes, one of my favourite hymn tunes. Really, really beautiful. I play it a lot in virtual church, and I really love it when people request it, because I love playing it. It's a sort of piece that I will not end on a TS to Picardie. <laughs> Uh, Curtis is in California. Um, I actually, just for a bit of fun, looked up the weather in uh, California um, today, um, just because in my mind California is just beautiful and hot all the time, and actually it, it is currently no hotter than it is here in the UK, and I think in this room right now it's probably at least twice um, as, as hot as you are, uh, Curtis, in California. The fan is turned off because it's a bit noisy. <laughs> So this piece was written uh, in 2020, so last year, <clears throat> excuse me, on the uh, popular Welsh hymn tune, um, but uses inventive counterpoint and a unique harmonic approach. Um, it's beautiful, it's very short, and Chris, uh, sorry, Curtis, I might have to apologise because towards the end of the piece I may have played um, a few bars double speed. Could you let me know in the chat? And it, um, when I play it again, I'll make sure that I don't play it double speed. So Curtis, uh, Curtis Hawthorne's uh, Prelude on Aberystwyth.
another piece which ended with a Thiers de Picardie. Um, I think given uh, that this was a prelude on the hymn tune rather than a hymn itself, um, we can let Curtis off ending with that G sharp. Um, I'll tell you this, uh, Curtis wrote a piece for um, Call for Composers 1, I think it was called a trumpet tune. Um, and <laughs> the tune uh, for that is whistled around BIS HQ to this very day. So if you want to go and listen to his um, um, submission for CFC 1, you will be whistling his tune for weeks to come. <laughs> Thank you very much, Curtis. Uh, very good of you to, to uh, give me those pieces. And like I said, um, I am sorry if I... Yes, it was double speed for those few bars. <laughs> it was the time signature which um, got me. Um, so we'll have to make possibly in, in the score, just put crotchet equals crotchet or something like that. That will make it a bit clearer. Right, we're going to go over to uh, Colin Willis now for the middle movement of his organ sonata. Now this organ sonata was written um, for Collins' undergraduate um, musical degree um, at Bangor University um, here in the UK. So three um, movement piece, uh, Collins sent me the whole um, sonata, but I was particularly taken uh, by this uh, middle movement, the Adagio, he was 22 when he wrote it, uh, so another one of our um, younger composers. So thank you very much for getting involved, Colin. And this is yet another piece which is inspired by the French school, but this time not of the Toccata series, but of the um, moving fourths and fifths. It's very luscious. It starts very slow and mysterious um, before having a crescendo towards the middle and then dying back down. Um, I would say that towards the middle, um, he goes into A flat minor. Um, don't often play in A flat minor, and um, one or two flats to get um, your head around in that key. <laughs> um, so this organ is Alessandria, a very smooth sounding organ. Um, and let's listen to the Adagio from Colin Willis's organ sonata.
And it's really good to see uh, so many people enjoying that piece and rightly so indeed. It really has that um, contemplative um, feeling about it and um, it's really, the harmonies are very luscious and don't always do what uh, one might expect. Um, yes, I didn't have, have chance uh, to play the outer two movements, um, but I, I played through this um, for the adagio and uh, was taken to that one, so it had to be the adagio. Perhaps one day we'll have the whole organ sonata. Right, well, we're on to our final piece this evening. Can you believe it? This is the 16th piece. 14 composers and 16 pieces. And they are all so wonderful. And I'm very proud to have been able to play them to you. Let's go to Canada. This is the first time that we've um, been to Canada on this musical tour uh, for some um, music by Mark Himmelman it's entitled Exultate. Immediately, just by the title alone, Exultate, um, you can just imagine what this piece is going to be like. And you would be right. It is very uplifting, very joyful and very happy, and you could say the perfect way to end Call the Composers 2. So Mark is from Ontario in Canada and wrote this uh, piece, <laughs> I like this, he wrote this um, during a lockdown as a project. So he, had a, he wanted to have a compositional project in lockdown. Well, I, I developed this YouTube channel in lockdown, that's what I did, and, and people are writing music. Perfect opportunity, isn't it, if you're stuck at home get composing. This piece, as you'll uh, be able to hear, um, is inspired uh, by, um, amongst others, um, William Mathias. Now, I'm a fan of William Mathias. William Mathias uh, was a, uh, a Welsh organist, um, and he is someone who I haven't yet featured on the channel. I do play a bit of William Mathias. His music is very jolly, it's very spiky, and he makes use of um, contrary motion in fourths. It's wonderful stuff, um, so we'll have to feature him. Um, for this organ, I will be using um, Rotterdam. Um, it does exciting very well, and what more is there to say? I think we should hand over to Mark um, for his exultate in tonight's final piece in this um, wonderful program of music. So Mark, over to you.
And I think that was the perfect way to end a perfect concert, um, all consisting of music, of course, written by yourselves. It's so um, hand on heart, so humbling and so wonderful and such a privilege um, for me to play your music to you. Thank you for trusting in me. Um, yes, Maurice, I wonder whether at Liverpool Met did, um, uh, did you hear the invocations on those um, Chamard reeds? That's a terrific piece. That is one of the pieces that I uh, play. Um, terrific stuff. That's a, a piece by William Mathias for anyone who has no idea what I'm talking about. Well, that, as I said, and as you know, that draws a close to today's um, video, the opening video, um, the opening broadcast, the opening event of uh, the Beauty in Sound Organ Festival. Thank you very much to all of the composers, um, both people who I was able to include in this program, and also, of course, to those people who I was not able to include in the program. Um, I can't play everything I get given because we would be going on for hours and hours and hours, and I can only learn so much alongside Vidor 6. Um, I hope you uh, agree that the standard has been extremely high. Uh, the music, by the way, um, performed tonight and performed in CFC 1. Uh, the majority of the music, the music that isn't already in copyright, um, will be published very soon um, in an, um, a beautifully printed and bound um, book. So you'll be able to actually buy um, all of the music heard in the two Call of the Composers concerts with all the money going back to the artists, to the composers. I'm not taking ownership of the copyright, I'm just merely collating the music and offering it to you in a, um, in a nice volume. Tomorrow is Organ Compline. If you have no idea what Organ Compline is, that's fine. I don't um, blame you. It's a term that I've made up myself. Compline is a very quiet, um, relaxed and late night service. It's atmospheric um, and is perfect for switching off at the end of the day. It's led here uh, from this organ live. Hopefully the organ will behave itself. It's uh, been a bit naughty recently um, with very quiet music plain song, readings, hymns, um, and three uh, quiet organ pieces. Um, one of the hymns is played by Maurice, who's in the chat, and the motet at the end is uh, sung by Swell Vox, accompanied by James Flores. Please do download the organ um, festival uh, program, the PDF. It's, a link to it is in the description of this video. Lots of information in there um, about the festival, about the artists, about what's what and who's who. There's also a bit of information about uh, the new organ, some updated information in there, hot off the press if you like, stuff that I haven't mentioned on the channel yet, so go and get that programme. Um, so until tomorrow night, same time, 8 o'clock, um, I will say a very grateful cheerio. Good night everyone. Take care and stay safe. Goodbye.